Thank you very much. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you in Kentucky. <coughs> Let me begin by indicating a little bit about my background, those relevant aspects of the many hats I've worn. And none of them are pointed, by the way, despite what my critics say. We believe it. I, <laughs> I was the senior associate commissioner in the Massachusetts Department of Education for almost five years, 99 to 2003, and supervised the revision or development of all of the standards in K-12, among other things, in Massachusetts that were later considered among the best sets of standards in the country. I later became a member of Common Core's validation committee. And to understand why I have been, for the past four years, talking about both the procedural and substantive deficiencies of the Common Core project and the Common Core standards, you also need to know that I have a very strong background of participation in local self-government. I was a town meeting member for 10 years in the community I've lived in. I was president of the League of Women Voters, as well as a board member for many years. And I was also a library trustee for 14 years. Two of those positions were elected positions in my home community. I am very well aware of what is FOIAble, Freedom of Information Act, susceptible to, as well as the needs for sunshine, laws to be able to shine on minutes of meeting, agendas, criti the critiques or criticisms that are offered for any proposed public policies. So my reaction when I was on the validation committee, a committee that existed from 2009 to 2010, a Common Core established committee, I was quite upset by the lack of transparency in everything we did and the entire set of procedures for developing and validating Common Core's standards. As you indicated before, Professor Milgram and I were two of the people on that committee, and we were two of the people that did not sign off, as we were expected apparently to be rubber stamps, but we were not, and we would not sign off because, in my opinion, and it was supported by the other four people who did not sign off, apparently, for these reasons. The standards were not internationally benchmarked, they're not rigorous, and they're not research-based. I know that I kept asking for the names of the countries to which we were supposedly internationally benchmarked and could never get them, could never find out what research underlay all the terrible flaws in the English language arts standards, which I will discuss, nor could we have any way of concluding that we had rigorous standards, yet these are the words that are used everywhere by superintendents of education, commissioners of education, boards of education, and other promoters of Common Core standards who fail to tell the public what it is about these standards that are even rigorous when we have just heard from the one mathematician on the validation committee that they simply didn't prepare students for STEM. So by definition, they can't be rigorous. But let me go into the qualifications of those who wrote the standards so that I can then explain why there are so many substantive flaws in these standards. First of all, we have no idea why the committee members were chosen for the Standards Development Committee. We suspect they were chosen by Achieve Incorporated and the Gates Foundation, which funded almost all of the different pieces of the Common Core project. We have no idea why the people who wrote both the math and the ELA standards were selected. ELA, I will concentrate on. Neither of them majored in English. Neither of them had ever taught in K-12 or above. Neither of them had ever published in any education journal, any serious piece of literary or reading scholarship or research, and neither of them was known to anyone in the field of reading or English. Why they were chosen, one of whom is now president of the college boards, and lowering the level of the SATs down to the level of 
Common Core's college readiness level in English and in math. As the news publicity in the last week has indicated, we have no idea why they were chosen for these particular national tasks, which should have been assigned to people who were known, visible, and respected by their academic communities and by teachers across the country. Which leads to just a few words on why the revolt is taking place and who is upset with Common Core across the country. First of all, the parents began to be upset last year because standards needed to be implemented by curriculum in the schools. And parents finally began to see what was happening in their children's classrooms and couldn't figure out why this was taking place. Teachers have become very upset and are now in many states uniting as part of their union with parents. And indeed, I have been sponsored as a speaker by combined PTA and union representation for the talks I now give. State legislators were bypassed. That's the third group that was deliberately bypassed when state boards of education, as in Kentucky, agreed to adopt Common Core standards. These state boards never asked their own state legislatures to enact a cost-benefit analysis. They never asked their teaching faculty in higher education to look at these college readiness standards in high school and give them collective feedback. Two things that one would have expected, state boards of education, which are composed of, generally speaking, intelligent, college-educated people chosen by a governor or elected in a state, they simply fail to do what common sense might have suggested. And fourth, local school boards were bypassed, and I am now speaking to many of them in the state of Massachusetts almost every day or every evening because they do not understand what is happening in their school curriculum. It may be all well and good for state commissioners or superintendents to say that everyone understands and we should be going forward to implement these standards, but there is a large audience of people who vote with their feet, parents, and they are choosing to opt out. Last night, a city in Massachusetts, Peabody, its school committee voted by a five to one vote to allow any student to opt out of any pilot testing for a common core based test. This is the third town or city in Massachusetts to allow it. They don't care what the legal counsel for the Department of Ed tells them. They are responding to constituents who are very concerned about what is happening in their own schools. The English language arts standards, I briefly will list the flaws because I have mentioned them and written about them in so many of my <coughs> testimonies that I think anyone who wants details can go to my homepage at the University of Arkansas, easy to get to by simply Googling Sandra Stotsky Arkansas, and you will find out what I am talking about when I talk about all the major flaws in the ELA standards in particular. They are, first of all, skills, not content. They stress writing more than reading, which is the opposite of what we know. Reading is the basis for good writing. All good writers have been good readers. And unless our schools everywhere do that, at all levels of proficiency, we will not have high-level graduates coming out of our high schools. We also have a problem with the, the kinds of readings that are established in these particular standards. Less literary study and more informational text. And we do also know that if you want to develop critical thinking or analytical thinking, which precedes critical thinking, you need to have English teachers spend as much time as they can teaching students how to read between the lines of complex literary texts. It is a waste of high school time, particularly for those students who might go on to become our future engineers, doctors, and scientists to be spending their time in an English class 
poring over something called informational text, which is not designed to help them learn how to be analytical readers, or certainly not critical thinkers. So we have a non-transparent process that we need to undo at the state level. And one of my major recommendations in every state I testify in is that state legislators can ask for the beginning of a revision process of the Common Core standards that their state board adopted as soon as possible with feedback from the state's teachers that can be asked for by the state's unions who are now in a much better position than local superintendents to ask teachers to send in anonymously the suggestions they would have in both math and English and in science now, what suggestions they would have for improving and strengthening the standards their state board of education adopted without seeking the kind of opinion they should have sought from teaching faculty in higher education. That is something every state legislature can do and owes it to their constituents in Kentucky as well as in all the other states. Start a revision process and halt whatever process is now taking place for testing or pilot testing your students on the basis of inferior standards that were unwittingly adopted by your State Board of Education, in Kentucky's case, before they were written, but in most other cases within weeks, if not minutes or hours, after the final document came out. We have a bizarre procedural process that was in place in almost every state. No state would have gone through what it did for Common Core with its Dr. own Stonsky, state. Dr. I'm going to yes, have to ask I'm you to, to wrap up. To wrap. I will wrap up right now and say I am very happy to answer further details in further questions.